a man, over the course of 20 years, painted over 100,000 pieces of Van Gogh's works. He believed that every brushstroke was etched in his mind. But the moment he truly saw the original work, he realized how vast the gap was between him and Van Gogh. Hey buddy, welcome back to China Business Insights. It's Lion here. Today, let's talk about a modern Van Gogh and the story of a Chinese oil painting village. In 1987, Zhao, who dropped out of school in the first year of junior high at age 15, left his hometown. He went to Shenzhen to work. At first, he designed patterns for products in a factory. Later, with the introduction of a fellow villager, he came to Dafen village. He became an apprentice in oil painting. Half a year later, he started working on his own, but for an entire year, he didn't sell a single painting. Then the fellow villager gave him a suggestion to paint works by Van Gogh. The reason is simple, high market demand. Even practice works could be sold quickly in exchange for a hearty meal. From that moment on, Zhao became deeply connected with Van Gogh. In order to paint closer to the original works, he found all the Van Gogh art books he could find. From composition to form to color strokes, he meticulously imitated them. A few years later, Zhao could paint without looking at the original or sketching. At his fastest, he only needed 28 minutes for a painting. And with the improvement in his skills, the number of customer orders also increased. Almost every month, he received six to 700 orders. On average, he had to paint 20 pieces a day. Just like that, he and his apprentices squeezed into a cramped studio, eating, sleeping, and working. Often working until one or two in the morning, when tired, they would sleep on cool mats on the floor. Upon waking, they would pick up their brushes and continue painting. Back then, the clients didn't have high expectations for the artworks. As long as the work was submitted on time, a similarity of 70-80% was acceptable. Artistic and aesthetic aspects were not really their concerns. Zhao once said that an order worth tens of thousands of yuan would make him happier than compliments on his paintings. In the subsequent time, Zhao taught his wife, younger brother, and brother-in-law. They each had their own roles. Some only painted starry night and sunflowers, some only painted cafes, and some only painted self-portraits. After a painting was replicated thousands, or even tens of thousands of times, every detail would be deeply ingrained in their minds. They could easily complete one in an hour. In fact, this situation was quite common in Dauphin Village. Some large-scale painting studios would even divide each painting among different artists. Some would only paint the left eye, some just a small bird. Some painted for over a decade, while others felt on the verge of collapse after only a few days. This young apprentice had just started painting Van Gogh's portraits, and although he had already revised it three times, the proportions, lines, and colors were still not right the master instructed him to scrape it off and repaint. The two stood silently facing each other for a while. In the end, the master's scolding broke the silence. The apprentice just picked up his brush and kept going. Actually, most of the young painters here are kids from the countryside who left school early. When they grab a brush in this big, unfamiliar city, they really don't know who Van Gogh is. All they know is that they need to paint to get food. They deal with loneliness and boredom, putting in their best effort just to get by. The village of Dauphin was once thought to produce the most oil paintings in the world. Official reports claim that the village now occupies over 60% of the global trade painting market. It often secures contracts worth of millions of US dollars in the biannual Canton Guangzhou trade fair. Their customers spanned the globe and included retailers, hotels, and tourists. But the village, part of the southern city of Shenzhen, was always seen more as a production line than a place of culture. Ever since he started this career, Zhao always had a dream. To see a real Van Gogh with his own eyes. Through biographical films, he learned about Van Gogh's lonely and challenging life. 
Not accepted by society, he wandered from the Netherlands to England and France, and in his lifetime, only sold one painting. He passed away in despair and frustration. Similarly penniless, and similarly misunderstood, Zhao felt a deep connection with him. But no matter how big the dream, it still needs the support of reality. His wife, who had been with him for decades, knew about his aspirations well. She deeply understood his ambitions. But how many oil paintings would it take to fund a trip abroad? For a middle-aged man with a family, it's tough to chase dreams. Until one day, a Dutch client extended an invitation to Zhao. He only had to pay for the round-trip ticket and not worry about anything else. His wife finally agreed. After the Chinese New Year, his visa was approved. When the day arrived, Zhao made arrangements for his home and gallery, packed his bags, and boarded the long flight. Upon arriving at his destination, he found Amsterdam to be tidy and elegant, with colors just like those in the oil paintings. He couldn't stop taking photos, and his face was always lit up with a smile. On a street corner, he instantly recognized one of his own paintings. When the client saw Zhao, he gave him a warm hug and thanked him in Chinese. As a token of appreciation, he brought some oil paintings as gifts. The client was very pleased. Tell me one secret. This night, I changed this one to the one in the museum, and believe me, they don't see the difference. <laughs> but soon, Zhao felt a wave of disappointment. He had thought that his paintings, which traveled across seas, would be hung in upscale art galleries. But in reality, this was just a souvenir shop. After the disappointment, he felt more confusion. Although the shop wasn't upscale, the price of the replica paintings wasn't cheap. An order that cost him 30 yuan turned into 30 euros here. That large size self-portrait he sold for 450 yuan, but here it was priced at 500 euros. The price was marked up by a whopping eight times. Only then did he realize that he had always been at the bottom of the industrial chain. After leaving the souvenir shop, Zhao finally stepped into the Van Gogh Museum. But the moment he saw the original paintings, his excitement and anticipation were replaced by silence. He stood for a long time in front of each painting, observing the colors, the thickness, and the brush strokes, which were all different from what he'd seen in books or imagined. Every stroke of Van Gogh's was filled with deep emotion, showing no trace of sadness, but only optimism and love. It was a level of creativity that no imitation or reproduction could ever compare to. After leaving the museum, an intangible pressure weighed on Zhao. He couldn't sleep that night, wondering how he could continue painting once he returned home. He had painted for 20 years, but perhaps he had never truly stepped into the world of art. In the following days, Zhao went to Paris, in front of the iron window of the saint Remy Asylum, where Van Gogh painted Starry Night. He saw the narrow street with the still existing cafe, and the sky was indeed that blue, the lights truly that warm. The journey's end was the Auvers Cemetery. Zhao Xiaoyong placed three cigarettes between an apple as a unique way to pay tribute to Van Gogh. A few days later, Zhao Xiaoyong returned to Dauphin Village. Life was as busy as ever, but now there was an added sense of confusion. High-quality replicas brought him stable income, but a replica was still just a replica. Without originality, one would eventually be left behind by the times. After much reflection, Zhao Xiaoyong decided to start anew. His first original work was of his own studio, a space not particularly large, but one that held the memories of over a decade. This is you. How do you get it? This is you. 
，这个我也花，呃，这个就是我自己我自己吧。刚刚开始你是在这里吗？呃，刚开始这这个这个地方是我的，我就住在这里看。嗯，然后我最后我就把你这个地方太小了嘛，然后我就把它移到这边了。你还记得啊？哇，那时候的生活真的很艰苦的，每天都是加班加点在这里打工，然后孩子又要闹又要带孩子。Becoming the world's factory wasn't for a dream. But for survival, from industrialization to becoming the world's factory to creating its own art and cultural products, China is undergoing a challenging industrial upgrade. Just as China's Van Goghs, although from grassroots origins, have dreams of becoming artists, to this day Zhao still operates his art gallery in Dafen Village. He knows he can't become Van Gogh. And he's unsure if he can become a painter whose legacy will last for centuries, but he's certain he will never put down his brush. My life is my art. When a person, as ordinary as they come, looks up at the starry sky in that moment, they have already transcended themselves. Just like the words Van Gogh wrote for himself, "I am a nobody, a non-entity." An unpleasant person, someone who has not and never will have any position in society. Well, then, even if that were all absolutely true, then one day I will have to show by my work what this nobody, this non-entity, has in his heart. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Don't forget to subscribe for more insights into the ever-evolving Chinese market. See you next time.